Let's study 9th standard ICSC biology chapter 4 the flower. The flower is the sexual organ of plants. It is usually the most beautiful and conspicuous part of a plant which is easily visible. It is actually a specialized shoot in which the leaves are modified into floral structures. Let's study the various parts of a bisexual flower. This is called the stalk or the pedicel. Its function is to support the flower. Some flowers may be directly attached to the branch without the stalk. They look like this. They don't have a stalk. Such flowers are called sessile flowers. The tip of the stalk is expanded in a cup-shaped receptacle and there is a special name for this called thalamus. Then we have the four whorls, the four main parts. The first whorl, which is the outermost, is called the calyx. It is made up of sepals, which are green in color, usually. The second whorl is the corolla, which is made up of petals, which are usually very colorful. The third whorl is the androsium, the male part. It is made up of stamens. In this figure, we see there are four stamens. Collectively, it's called androsium, the male organ. Each stamen is made up of filament and a bilobed anther. Inside the anther, there are four pollen sacs or compartments. Inside the pollen sacs, we have pollen grains which are very minute in size. And the pollen grain contains the future male nucleus or the male gamete. The innermost whorl, the fourth whorl, is called the gynaecium, also called the pistil, collectively. Each unit is called a carpel. In this flower, we have shown only one carpel. So this is the female part. This carpel has three subparts. The ovary at the base, the swollen part, the style and the top stigma. The stigma is the landing place for the pollen grains during pollination. The style directs the male nucleus towards the ovary for fertilization. Inside the ovary, there are many ovules and inside the ovules, we have the female gamete. The male gamete has to fuse with the female gamete for fertilization to take place, which gives rise to a zygote. A new organism can then be developed from that zygote. The detailed explanation of pollination and fertilization is there in the next chapter. Now let's study more parts of the flower and the types of flowers. First of all, if a flower has all four worlds, calyx, corolla, androsium and gynaecium, it is called a complete flower. And if, even if one of the floral structures is missing, it is called an incomplete flower. Now out of these four worlds, two are essential for reproduction. That is the stamens and the carpels. Without them, reproduction is impossible. Hence, they are called the essential parts of a flower or the reproductive part. Apart from this, we have certain non-essential parts, also called accessory parts. They simply help the reproductive parts to complete their function. So these accessory parts make the flower more attractive for pollination or just protect the reproductive parts. Example, the sepals and the petals are not essential. Even if they are not present in a flower, reproduction can still take place. So they are called accessory or non-essential parts of the flower. Sometimes the sepals and petals are fused together. They are undifferentiated. Instead of two separate whorls, they may form a single whorl. That is called a perianth. Now when the perianth is green in color, it is called sepaloid perianth. But if the perianth is colorful, non-green, it is called petaloid perianth. Now let's study a few more non-essential parts of a flower. Sometimes flowers grow in the axil of a leaf-like structure. 
in fact this leaf like structure being colorful can be mistaken for a petal but actually it's not it is called a bract and this flower this plant is bougainvillea another non essential part but very useful are nectaries many flowers at the base have nectaries which are a group of nectar secreting cells they secrete nectar which attracts the bees and other insects and when these bees travel into the flower pollen grains may stick to their body or may fall off their body onto the stigma thus insects help in pollination so flowers like nasturtium have nectaries to help in insect pollination now flowers may be bisexual or unisexual when a flower has both male and female parts it is called bisexual also called hermaphrodite but sometimes flowers may just have the male parts so they would be called staminate flowers that is a male flower and some flowers only have the female part so they are called pistillate flowers or female flowers example of such unisexual flowers are the flowers on papaya and palm when a flower is bisexual we can say that it is a perfect flower and when a flower is unisexual it is imperfect flower and of course all imperfect flowers are incomplete as well because incomplete flowers means when any one whorl is absent and an imperfect flowers one of the sexual whorls is absent so all imperfect flowers are incomplete but not vice versa now there are some flowers which have neither the male nor the female reproductive organs they are called neuter flowers for example the ray florets of a sunflower for example in the sunflower we see that at the outskirts at the periphery we have ray florets they are not petals but neuter flowers yes this is a combination of many flowers together surprisingly these ray flower florets cannot reproduce because they don't have the male and female parts that is present only in the main flower in the center so these ray florets simply attract insects for insect pollination now let's understand the general description of the floral parts first of all the calyx usually the calyx has five sepals which are green in color if the sepals are free they are called polysepals see they are not touching each other except in the center but if they are fused together then they are called gamosepals in some flowers like uh, the hibiscus there may be a second series of calyx that is sepals just below the first series these are called epicepals and collectively it's called epicalyx so that's yet another additional whorl to particular flowers when the flower opens the sepals may fall off or they may continue to be there in fact sometimes even after fertilization once the flower has become a fruit sepals may still be present which we can see in certain fruits like tomato apple guava etc sepals are usually green but if the sepals are fused with the petals and they form a petaloid perianth then they will be non green they will be colorful for example gulmohar flowers have red perianth the function of the sepals is to protect the young flower bud before the flower opens up or before it matures and since it is green it does photosynthesis as well it produces food for the flower and the plant next let's talk about the corolla it has petals uh, generally it is it has only one whorl but there may be double whorls as well just like we had a double whorl in calyx and epicalyx and hibiscus so here double whorl example would be poppy flowers there may be a spiraling whorl example is water lily when the petals are free they are called polypetalous and when they are fused it is called gamopetalous the function of petals is to attract the insects for pollination although there are some flowers which does not do not depend on insect pollination in that case the petals are small and dull in color so another function of petals is to protect the stamens and the pistils especially when the petals are in the form of a tube 
Next, let's talk about androsium, the male part. It is made up of stamens. As described earlier, each stamen has a filament and a bilobed anther. Totally, there are usually four pollen sacs, compartments in which there are many pollen grains. They are microscopic, and if we zoom in, inside each pollen grain, we have nucleus, which would mature to become the male nucleus, or male nuclei, in fact. Now, androsium may be arranged in four ways. First of all, if all the stamens are free, then they are called polyandrous. Example is petunia. All examples have to be learned. If all the filaments are fused together, but the stamens are uh, fused together, but the anthers are independent, then such a condition is called monadelphus. If the filaments are united into two bundles, it's called diadelphus. And if the filaments are united in multiple bundles, it's called polyadelphus. Example of monadelphus would be china rose and cotton. For diadelphus, the example is pea. And for polyadelphus, it is bombax. Now let's understand the structure of a carpel. Many carpels together is called a pistil or a gynaecium. Here I've just shown one carpel, which has three main parts, the ovary, the style, and the stigma. The stigma is a landing place for pollen grains. So during pollination, if the pollen grains of the same species falls on it, which may be either self-pollination or cross-pollination, then the process continues. The pollen tube grows through the style, reaches the ovary. The ovary, which is the basal swollen portion, may be a common ovary for many carpels at a time. And it has compartments called locules. In the locules, we have ovules. So I see four ovules out here. And these ovules are attached to this tissue, which is called the placenta. Even in the human womb or any mammalian womb, the term placenta is used for the point of attachment. Now, inside this ovule, we have the female gamete. When the male gamete fuses with the female gamete, fertilization takes place. More about it in the next chapter. Now, finally, let's study about the sexuality in plants and then inflorescence. Now, we know that flowers may be bisexual or unisexual. The flowers and its type also decides what kind of a plant it is. A plant may be monoecious or dioecious. Monoecious means that the male and the female flowers grow on the same plant. Example, maize, cucumber and pumpkin. What this means is that even though the flowers are unisexual, the plant as a whole is bisexual because the plant, the single plant, the same plant has both male and female flowers. So it looks something like this. On We have a tree and on one branch, let me show some male flowers and perhaps this has the female flowers. No, there's no specific reason why I've shown female flowers with red. So here, cross-pollination may not happen. Self-pollination is possible out here because the flowers are on the same plant. So the DNA of the male gamete and the DNA of the female gamete will be almost same. So this is called self-pollination. On the other hand, dioecious plants are such that the male flowers or the female flowers grow on different plants. So here, cross-pollination is the only possibility. Self-pollination is impossible. Because if one plant has only male flowers, how can self-pollination happen? The female flowers will be on a different plant. Example, palm and papaya. Now let's talk about inflorescence. Inflorescence is the mode of arrangement of flowers on the axis of the plant. You can see in the diagram there are different ways in which the flowers may be arranged on the plant. But these diagrams are not important. And finally, placentation. It is a manner in which the ovules are arranged or attached to the wall of the ovary. So in this diagram, I showed that the ovules were arranged in such a manner in the ovary. But in a different plant, perhaps they are arranged in a different manner. Maybe they are alternating and not side by side. So this type of or manner in which the ovules are arranged in the ovary is called the placentation. This means that when we cut open, open the fruit, 
and we see the seeds different fruits will have different arrangement of seeds it all depends on the placentation after all the ovules will become the seeds and the ovary will become the fruits after fertilization hi students this is aj sir if you like this video press the like button if you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures email me or message me on instagram check the description for more information